Thank you, Dr. Schwab, and thank you, Emily, for asking me to join you today. It's very exciting to share with what uh, share what we've been up to in the NJIAS world um, over the past year. So let me get started. Um, in case you're not familiar with NJIIS, um, it's the New Jersey Immunization Information System, but we call it NJIIS. It is a free confidential population-based online system that collects and consolidates data for New Jersey's children and adults. It consolidates immunization information to provide an accurate immunization assessment for individuals in the state of New Jersey, as well as assists communities in assessing their immunization coverage and identifying pockets of need. NJIIS is currently operated and maintained by New Jersey's Department of Health. There are over 12,000 active users in NJIIS. This includes staff from healthcare practices, pharmacies, hospitals, school nurses, and health departments. Sites that administer the COVID-19 vaccine are required to enter all individuals vaccinated into NJIIS. Some facilities have read-only access to NJIIS to view student, patient, or client immunization records. This includes nursing homes, daycares, and home visiting programs. Every state in the country has their own immunization registry. Immunization registries are an important tool to increase and sustain high vaccination coverage by consolidating vaccination records of patients from multiple providers, generating reminder and recall vaccination notices for each patient, providing vaccination history documents, and vaccination coverage assessments. There are over 8 million patient records in NJIIS. NJIIS is a lifespan registry covering patients from birth through the senior years. Since 2004, all children born in New Jersey are automatically entered into NJIIS through the electronic birth certificate process. NJIIS facilities can also create new patient records in the registry. Immunization records come into NJIIS in two ways. Sites can log into NJIIS and manually enter immunization information into the patient record, or your electronic health records can interface with NJIAS through standard HL7 messaging protocols. Facilities with access to NJIAS can view a patient's immunization records, as well as see if a patient is due or past due for immunizations. Here's an example of a patient who has received both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. You can see the date the vaccine was given, the site where they were vaccinated, and information on the dose, including manufacturer and lot number. NJIAS users can also access the scheduler detail in the patient record to identify when your patient or client is due or past due for immunizations. Once the practice enters vaccine data into the patient record, the scheduler detail begins to forecast based on birthday and vaccine history as part of the, as part of the ACIP schedule. Here, you can see ye the yellow boxes indicate the earliest possible dates when the next round of vaccines is due in the series. Green shows what has been given, including the date the dose was administered. Red is what is due or past due. White tells you you can no longer give the dose based on age. The scheduler detail is updated to reflect by ACIP guidelines. As you can see here, the COVID vaccine has been added and forecasting has been changed as the vaccine has been offered to a younger population. There are a few requirements around NJIIS I'd like to mention. Sites that immunize children under the age of seven are required by state mandate to enter that information into NJIIS. Participation in NJIIS is required for sites that participate in the Vaccine for Children or 317 programs. And as I mentioned earlier, COVID vaccine providers are required to report all COVID vaccinations given in NJIIS. All right. Let's take a look at the past several months. We, NJIAS, has had a busy year. Since the fall of 2020, due to the COVID vaccine requirements, NJIAS staff have enrolled hundreds of new providers to administer the COVID vaccine. Since these providers primarily serve adult patients, many were unfamiliar with NJIAS. New providers included employee health sites, pharmacies, those COVID vaccination mega sites, and dialysis centers. NJIS staff worked with these providers to verify information, assist with the required DOH and CDC enrollment forms, ensure they took the required COVID vaccine webinar, and assisted with data entry issues. To address the high volume of new providers, 
NJIIS has now has online enrollment for COVID vaccine facilities, as well as the required on-demand COVID webinar that provides information on COVID vaccine requirements, NJIIS data entry, ordering, and the storage of the COVID vaccine. Other new NJIIS sites include outpatient surgical sites, rehabilitation centers, and nursing homes who have read-only access to verified patient vaccination status. Since December 2020, over 11 million COVID vaccination doses have been added to NJIIS. NJIIS staff is now hard at work cleaning up the data to ensure patient contact information, demographics, and vaccine information is correct so New Jersey residents can access their records and meet COVID immunization requirements. Another update I have is that we're now excited to announce that NJIIS is now sharing data with the New York State and New York City immunization registries. If you have a patient or client who was vaccinated in New York State or in New York City, you should be able to see those vaccinations in NJIIS. It has long been a goal for state registries to share data with one another. The COVID vaccine has highlighted the importance of this, and we're hoping New York is just the beginning. New Jersey is working with other neighboring states to share our data as well. The last few months have brought COVID vaccine mandates for work, education, and travel. Due to these mandates, thousands of New Jersey residents have reached out to NJIAS to access their COVID vaccination records. New Jersey recently introduced the Docket mobile phone app. Docket connects you directly with immunization registries, including NJIAS, to deliver up-to-date COVID-19 immunization records for individuals and their families. Docket is a CDC-approved application used in multiple states, including Utah and Minnesota, that adheres to federal standards for data security and offers a simple way for New Jerseyans to access their COVID-19 immunization records. Docket can be downloaded from Google Play or the App Store at no charge. And there have been over 480,000 New Jersey COVID vaccination records accessed from Docket since it was introduced a few months ago. And here's an example of COVID vaccination records in Docket. You can access your records as well as those in your family. Your Docket record will display your, the dates you were vaccinated, the vaccine manufacturer, and the lot number. If you download Docket and cannot access your records or the information is incomplete, please let NJIS staff know, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, we have a brand new request immunization record tab on the homepage. If your docket information is incorrect, click on this tab to learn how to troubleshoot the app or open a ticket to reach NJIS staff. Those without a smartphone can click on this tab to receive a paper copy of their COVID vaccination records. You do not need an NJIS account to access this tab because it's on our homepage. So you are welcome to direct patients and clients to the site. If your patient does not have access to the internet or a smartphone, they can still access their immunization records. If your facility has access to NJIAS, you can print out the patient's immunization records. It's in the patient form tab of your patient or client's NJIAS record. You can print out this record or download it to a PDF. New Jersey residents can also contact the New Jersey COVID vaccine hotline to access their immunization records. And you can see on the screen a list of um, New Jersey's COVID hotlines. Um, the vaccine hotline is 855-568-0545, or they can call 211. Um, and again, this um, website, which is a fantastic resource if you're not familiar with it, COVID19.nj.gov has all the updated information around New Jersey's COVID vaccination efforts, um, testing, everything like that. So good resource to have in your back pocket. All right. You can find NJIIS at njiis.nj.gov. NJIIS offers user support for system utilization through online training sessions, Help desk, help desk services, system enhancements, and immunization program updates. There are no member costs or fees to participate in the state program. To enroll your facility and gain user access to NJIAS, please click on the enrollment and training uh, section of the NJIAS homepage. And if your facility is interested in, in administering the COVID-19 vaccine, please click on the COVID-19 enrollment section on the homepage to learn more about the requirements around the vaccine.
All NJIAS trainings are currently in webinar, webinar format only. You can find a description and register for them in the Enrollment and Training section of the NJIAS homepage. Our Fundamentals webinar is offered multiple times a week. This gives you full access to NJIAS, allowing you to look up patient records and enter immunization information into the record. You can also manage vaccine inventory, create new patients, and run reports. We also offer read, monthly read-only webinars for those who require read-only access to look up patient and client immunization records. NJIAS also offers on-demand webinars that can be taken anytime. The COVID vaccine webinar is required for any user entering COVID vaccine data into NJIAS. If your facility is concerned that patients have fallen behind their, on their vaccination schedule, check out the Reminder Recall webinar, which shows you how to run the Reminder Recall report in NJIAS. This is a great report that gives you a list of patients due or past due for vaccines. The report gives you a list of phone numbers if you'd like to, just, to do some phone outreach, or you can print out a form letter and mailing labels for mail, for mail outreach. It is a great way to remind patients to come into your office to get vaccinated. Finally, the Department of Health offers an HPV vaccination tool tutorial for offices interested in boosting adolescent immunization rates. Hopefully there's time uh, in a minute for questions. I'm happy to answer any, but after the meeting, if you have any questions, you can always click the submit a request button on the NJIAS homepage to open a ticket. It is the best way to reach NJIAS staff with questions on enrollment or anything else. Thanks so much. And I'm not sure if there's time for questions now or later, but thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, Leanne. That was uh, very informative and um, yeah, it's interesting and useful information. I think we do have some time for questions now. Um, there was there were a couple in the chat as well. Let me read that first. Um, actually, there was one question in the chat. Can we post COVID nineteen shots online? What is the name of the app for it? I'm not sure. No, I need more information on that question. Yeah, that was from Stephen Leon. Leon, um, you could unmute yourself and ask the question. Stephen, if you want to click the submit a request button to open a ticket to give more information on your question, uh, please go right ahead. Again, it's on the MJIS homepage. Um, does anyone else have any questions, comments? I just have a comment that um, I just want to encourage if you can um, go back, Leanne, to the slide that has about the reports on it. Oh, sorry. I think it was like the second to last slide. Yes, this one. Training, um, yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, uh, encourage people and, and also let you know about a couple of resources that we have. So um, the reminder recall tool is really helpful for identifying um, patients that are overdue for vaccines. And, you know, right now with back to school um, and as a result of the pandemic, a lot of children are behind on their regular um, vaccine schedule and maybe missing doses or, you know, have fallen behind. So it's really important to get, you know, re recall people back to the office. And this is a tool that you can use. And if you have any trouble using it, you know, please reach out to Leanne and her team because they can help walk you through it. Um, and I also wanted to share that uh, Melinda Garcia, the manager of adolescent immunization initiatives at the partnership who's on the call, um, she can, she's also available to help with, um, you know, promoting the reminder recall um, tool at your office and also with the using the HPV vaccination tool um, to help assess your HPV vaccination rates. Because, you know, again, we all are, you know, very 
focused right now on COVID-19 vaccine and with an upcoming flu season, looking ahead to that. And we don't wanna um, fall behind on regular, um, you know, re regularly recommended uh, routine vaccines as well. And I also just wanna take the opportunity to thank Leanne and her team at the partnership, um, Teresa and Renzo and Keitha, who do just a, a great job. They, over the past year and a half, you know, their workload has been tremendous. And I just wanna acknowledge, um, you know, everything that they've been doing to bring sites on to using the registry to administer COVID-19 vaccine and also um, now working with people to uh, ensure the correctness of the vaccine records um, as we all see how important they are, uh, you know, in the face of mandates and return to school, return to work, um, return to offices. So I just want to um, pat them on the back and congratulate them for a, a lot of hard work. Thank you. Here, and I, I agree, they've done a fantastic job. And uh, working with our partners on the Department of Health, who are also on the call today, it's been it's been a team effort. And uh, uh, thank you. We're always happy to talk about it. Yeah. Thank you. I have, I have two questions um, related to vaccines in general. The, the docket app, is that only for COVID or does that do all the vaccines? Yeah, right now in New Jersey, it is only for COVID. Um, brand new for us, um, but we're hoping, I, I can't speak for the Department of Health. I don't know where they're on this. But they're on, they are on this, but it would be a great resource for all vaccines. So we'll see what happens in the future. Okay. And I have the same question for the sharing with New York. Is it, uh, is it two way and is it automatic and is it all the vaccine records come through or is it just COVID? No, from what I understand, it's all vaccines, um, and it is two-way. Um, this has been a long time coming for every state. I think ultimately it would be nice to have access to every state registry. Um, um, it's come up before in times of crisis. For example, if there, there's a hurricane in New Orleans and everyone goes to Texas, Texas would like to have access to immunization records. Um, COVID has just really brought this to the forefront and it's hard. Um, there's a lot of state rules around privacy, different states have different rules. Um, but now I think it's really happening, which is very, very exciting, especially in a state like New Jersey when we have people moving in and out constantly, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Florida, all the snowbirds. Um, so we're, this is just the beginning. Um, and hopefully all the states share, all, all 50 states, Puerto Rico, other countries get on board. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any more questions or comments now for Leanne? All right, well, thank you. If anybody does have any more questions, I'd encourage you to submit them uh, and we'll be happy to keep everyone up to date. Next on the agenda is uh, Emily Haynes is gonna provide some updates on COVID-19 initiatives and new resources um, related to COVID-19 vaccination from the partnership. Yes, so let me just uh, get my screen back up. Okay. Sorry, there's always a delay as to when you pick, share your screen and then um, the toolbars all get in the way. <laughs> Okay, so let's see the agenda. So um, thank you, Leanne, for that great presentation. And I'm now going to just go through some of the new resources that we have at the partnership um, for maternal and child health, and also with some of our partner organizations and wanted to make sure that you are aware of them and, and we're very excited to announce them because you will be hearing more about them. And as co members, we you know, want to make sure that you're first to hear about new initiatives and also um, helping to ho hopefully finding these resources helpful for you in promoting vaccinations. 
uh, and also uh, hopeful to promote these programs as well as a way to increase vaccination coverage. So the first program that I'm excited to share is uh, called Step Up Backs Up Campus Health Awareness Campaign. And this is a, a three-year program that was awarded to the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health from the State Department of Health um, that is set to encourage students and staff at higher education institutions in New Jersey to get vaccinated for COVID-19. So the goal of this program is to increase vaccine acceptance of COVID-19 vaccine in particular this year, and also to help to um, combat uh, vaccine myths, misinformation or disinformation as kind of as a new term through the pandemic that we're hearing where it's the um, active, uh, you know, wrong information that's being put out there as opposed to misinformation which is just you know maybe uh, somebody didn't have a full understanding of it of, of the information and they're sharing it disinformation is when someone knowingly puts out um, wrong information and then it is sharing it so we're combating both misinformation and disinformation around COVID-19 vaccine to help bust those myths and increase vaccine acceptance for college students. And we have, um, we're putting together a team at the partnership. Sandy and Brittany introduced themselves and we also have, we'll bring on another team member soon. And this team will be providing outreach and education at all the higher education institutions in New Jersey, um, statewide to connect with the colleges. A lot of them have already signed on to promote COVID-19 vaccine to their students. Um, you know, colleges and universities want their student and staff populations to be vaccinated. There, there's a, a high motivation there. And so we want to work with them on what some things that they may already be doing and then offer them another resource. So the Step Up Backs Up, backs up Campus Health Awareness Campaign will um, have a contest component for students. And the idea is that the students will be encouraged to create a um, video, like a public service announcement style video or a podcast session where they will be educating their peers about COVID-19 vaccine. And, um, you know, we will kind of run this similar to the Protect Me With 3 Plus um, contest, if any of you are familiar with that initiative at the partnership, where, you know, the students submit their creations, we review them to make sure that they're accurate information there will be like a judging process and then um, finalists will be um, selected. And the grand prize for the first place winner is $5,000. So we really hope that, you know, college students will, that will attract their attention um, and they'll want to participate and then also, you know, educate their peers and educate um, their campus to get them wanting to get vaccinated and overcome some barriers. So if you have, you know, if you want more information about this campaign, you can contact Sandy. Um, her email's up on the screen right now. And um, I guess we'll just stop um, after each announcement and see if there's any particular questions about each component. So does anybody have any comments or questions about this campaign? Okay, we'll move on. So the next um, program that I'd like to share with you is the Epidemiology and Laboratory and Capacity Program at the Partnership. So um, this program has been in place for about a year and it, um, the partnership is working with 12 subgrantees doing work across Northern New Jersey. And these um, sites are participating in outreach, marketing, vaccine registration, testing um, to reach populations um, across Northern New Jersey. And you can see I've listed the community-based organizations on the screen and the city in which they're based. Um, NJ211 is a statewide partnership and that was referenced in Leanne's um, presentation as well. That's a 24 seven hotline that people can call to get information about 
a lot of different services in New Jersey, including COVID-19 um, you know, vaccination resources and testing resources. And these community-based organizations range you know, from um, serving the elderly to refugees, and they are providing ongoing updates and information and assistance to get um, people tested and vaccinated for COVID-19. If you have any questions about this or are interested you know, in connecting with any of these community-based organizations to um, connect maybe your patients or clients to COVID-19, um, community health workers or you know, case managers, um, you can reach out to Sarah Arshad. She is the ELC coordinator and her email is up on the screen also. Okay. And then next we have the COVID Community Health Worker Program. Um, this is a new program at the partnership that started in July and it is um, funded by HRSA, the Health Resources and Services Administration. Um, so this, um, we're, we're developing and creating this team of community health workers, really, uh, I think it's about 13 staff, two supervisors and 11 community health workers who will um, provide outreach education and intensive case management through the vaccination process. So really identifying people who have not been vaccinated for COVID-19, um, talking, talking with them, educating them about getting vaccinated, helping them to set up an appointment if they you know, need assistance with that, helping them to make plans on how they're going to get to their appointment, you know, helping them with accessing that service, and then following up with them after they get their shot, how are they feeling, helping them to schedule their next appointment, um, making sure that they're staying on target for their doses, and again, just following through with them through the entire process of getting vaccinated for COVID-19. And um, the goal of the program is that there will be case management provided to 5,500 individuals. So the, each community, community health worker will carry a caseload of um, 100 participants at a time or you know, up to 500 for the year. And the goal is that we would outreach and educate um, 11,000 individuals. So you can see there's target counties. Um, let me just move so I can see it. It's Essex, Passaic, Hudson, and Union are the target counties for this initiative. And I also listed um, priority cities um, for, for this presentation, Newark, Irvington, and East Orange, because I know many of our EMIC members are located in the Essex metro area or greater Newark area. And um, this is a really good resource for you to help connect people to getting vaccinated if they have questions, if they need more intensive case management to getting vaccinated, this is a, a definite resource. And we have staff that speak different languages. Um, so, you know, we're able to serve um, a wide population of people. Okay. And if you want more information or you'd like to connect more closely with this program, I listed the um, director that's overseeing the initiative. Her name is Myra Ramirez. She's the director of strategic community initiatives at the partnership, as well as Ivelisse and Desiree. Um, they are, Ivelisse is the program manager and Desiree is the program supervisor. And some of you may remember Desiree um, Bonner. She was a, a member of EMIC uh, a few years back. So um, you might be familiar with her and want to reconnect with her now in her new role. So um, I do want to announce and um, encourage you to register and attend this event if you have not done so already. I did send a reminder out, um, I think yesterday, for the webinar. So we are hosting an HPV webinar on Thursday, September 23rd from 2 to 3 p.m. And registration is open on the partnership website, pmch.org. And uh, this program 
is called Women's Health, Health Disparities, Cancer Prevention, Cervical Cancer, and HPV. And we were very fortunate that Melinda Garcia, our manager of adolescent immunization initiatives, was able to secure Tamika Felder as a speaker. And for those of you who um, don't know Tamika Felder, she is a national and internationally known speaker. Um, she is a can cervical cancer survivor and um, she became a cervical cancer advocate. She developed, um, she's the founder of a, an organization called Survivors, you know, spelled C-E-R-V-I-V-O-R. Um, and it is a foundation that connects cervical cancer survivors together. And so she, she really has grown that organization and she has become really a very well-known advocate around cervical cancer and HPV vaccination and HPV related cancers. So we're very excited to be able to bring Tamika, um, you know, to New Jersey, I'll say remotely um, because it's a webinar, but we're very excited to be able to, to offer this event through the partnership. And it's also funded through the White Hill Foundation, um, which is our uh, funder for our HPV and uh, cancer prevention initiative. Uh, we are very excited to announce also that the White Hill Foundation has funded our HPV and cancer initiative program for another year. So we are funded for that program through October um, 2022. <laughs> to think about which year it is, um, October 2022. And so we'll be able to continue that outreach. Um, Melinda will be overseeing that initiative and we will have staff that are able to, um, again, provide education on HPV vaccination, uh, reaching out to dentists and dental offices to make sure that they're encouraging their patients to get vaccinated for HPV, and um, also encouraging parents and teens to learn more about HPV-related cancers and prevention. Okay. Um, we're also excited to announce that um, the partnership was awarded um, funds from the New Jersey Department of Health to continue the Power to Protect New Jersey campaign. So for those of you who are new to the partnership and to EMIC, um, we were uh, awarded uh, funds last year from the State Department of Health to work with them to run the statewide flu campaign. And uh, we were able to develop a website, powertoprotectnj.org. Um, we were able to cultivate a New Jersey influenza action group of over 200 members and representing over 100 organizations throughout the state that committed to promoting flu messaging to their networks. And we had ranges from, you know, medical associations, doctor's offices, clinics, to um, child care centers, family success centers, um, you know, very, a very wide range of um, participants and members. And so we're very happy you, to, you know, continue this initiative and we'll, we'll be hosting another kickoff event uh, October 5th from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, our speaker is Carlos Velasquez. He's the president and CEO of HMA Associates. Um, and he has a lot of experience with promoting um, flu vaccine to different populations and um, strengthening flu vaccine messaging. And so he will be presenting on flu vaccine and health disparities and how to tailor messaging about flu vaccine to different populations. Um, so if you haven't already heard from um, Amy Goal at NJ Flu Action at pmch.org, um, please keep out for keep an eye out for her email. She will be contacting the uh, flu action network um, members from last year to ensure that they're you know, still interested in participating. And um, if you're interested in joining this effort and maybe you're new, you can contact her at the email on the screen and um, she'll be happy to add you to the list. And please check out our website. We're updating the social media content this year. Um, we're refreshing the social media um, shareables and we're also creating a print poster that we're going to print and mail out to our action group members so they can post it around. Um, and they, we're going to leave some space for you to put information about your own organization on there as well, because that was a request from members last year. So that's something new that we're going to be developing. 
um, and we'll be sharing information about how to access those new materials for you to promote flu vaccine to your network um, at the kickoff event. So please join us if you're able um, on October 5th. Um, again, I just want to make sure everyone's aware of Influenza Honor Roll. That is a program of the Department of Health. Um, the website is here if you want more information, but if you are planning on doing flu um, activities this year, flu, promote, flu vaccine promotion activities, um, you can uh, apply to be recognized by the State Department of Health um, for your uh, activities and for your efforts. The Protect Me With Three Plus um, campaign is um, up and running and we will be accepting new submissions starting October 1st. So very happy and excited to, to start our 10th year for that campaign. Um, this year we do have a new category for uh, students to submit. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Protect Me With Three Plus is an annual um, poster and video contest for students in New Jersey. Um, middle school and high school students, um, grades five through fifth through 12th grade, can, um, can make either a poster or a video, and then they um, learn about the vaccines that are recommended for them. So they cover HPV vaccine, Tdap vaccine, meningococcal, flu vaccine, and now also COVID-19 vaccine. So um, the website is protectmewith3.com. And they go on the website, they learn about one of the, you know, the vaccines that are recommended for them. They pick one of them and then they make their poster or video about that one vaccine. And, you know, we do typically um, receive about, you know, between 200 to 300 submissions per year. And we're expecting, hope, hoping that because of the pandemic and because of the, uh, renewed interest in public health um, that students will be interested in learning more about COVID-19 vaccine and wanting to educate their peers about it. So this is a fun project that students can participate in to learn more about vaccines. Um, and we also encourage teachers to use this as a classroom project for fifth through 12th grade. Um, this is a great um, tool for remote learning as well because students can make their poster or video you know from home um, if schools are in a hybrid situation so you know this is a, a really um, timely project for the year and um, we also updated the information on protectmewith3.com to include information about COVID-19 vaccine. Um, I think this is my last announcement, so <laughs> I know it's a, thank you for bearing with me while I go through all of these initiatives. Um, so the last one is our Two Protects Two campaign materials. I just want to remind people that these are available for ordering off of the partnership website. So I put up here um, where you would go on the website to order them. Um, we have materials available in English and Spanish, and we can mail them out to you. Um, they do promote uh, flu and Tdap vaccines for pregnant women. Um, we did develop these using feedback from focus groups and they were medically reviewed by physicians. Um, so you can also download digital copies from the webpage. So um, just to remind you, these, this is the flyer. These are the postcards, they're double-sided. And um, we also developed some bookmarks as well, which are nice to hand out you know, at health fair events or tabling events. If you have any coming up, we are happy to send those out to you. You can just go on the website and place an order and we'll get them out to you for your event. So that is um, all the announcements that I have about our you know, new resources and renewed resources at the partnership for promoting immunizations. Um, if you have any questions about any of these initiatives, please feel free to reach out to me. I can connect you with the right person, or um, I did try to share contact information on the slides as well.